Well, well, well. Baby's first 100 days. Hardcore Minecraft. For the record, here's the seed. Have fun. Anyway, it was supposed to be a mushroom biome. Spoiler alert, the game loads me into day zero of a bit of a bamboo jungle. Desperately gathering wood, I take off to search for a better vantage point. I can't be in this jungle for too long. Not in hardcore. New tools later already, and I'm clearing down the summit of trees. The vantage point should be removed of obscurities. It's nighttime in hardcore. You know what that means. This never gets old. Digging straight down, but safely. Official day one begins with a continuation of deforestation, as well as planting the bamboo I found on the way in. Bamboo will be crucial going forward. But deforestation is the rest of the way, until I'm planting torches later at night. Absolutely back in the mines, because death comes easy. I find some iron, coal, and copper. The next morning to day two, I made a bucket, as well as a shield. I think most of us would. My first goal, for now, is to obtain water and use it for farms. I lucked out with both melons and apples. This forest is very bountiful and generous. Well, I got the water, so after systematically jumping back up with it, I took an organizational break before trying to level the living area for this starter hole. As the sun went down in my hole, I went inside of it. Back to the mines in search of glorious deep slate and various ores. The most common ore is coal, with the occasional iron and copper ore blocks, though those mostly come later. Going down far enough, I come across this dark cave area. I'm nervous, so I'm having trouble getting around at first, but I gather my bearings and hop on in. Lighting with torch spam, I spot the first monster and, frankly, I've no good depth perception of how close they are to me. He goes down and melons nourish my wounds. Going back up is safer for some reason, as well as shows a lot more cool ores I'll be gathering. Day 3 and I'm having a hard time spotting anything close for good help. This deforestation could continue for a lifetime, but I need to be able to advance to cooler gear and builds. Oh well, back into the mines. It's still daylight outside, but I need to set up some sort of farm. Since I have melons, it'll be a melon farm. What can I say, I'm a very simple man. With that set up, for now I just burn some daylight with more resource gathering. I'd like to have at least iron before I go really exploring. Uh, this is hardcore after all, so you can't be too cautious. Uh, being brash is how you get yourself killed, by the way. Same in-game day, but second recording session and I bore into the second little cave area complete with useful ores like iron. Ah yes, deep slate. My new building fetish alongside copper. This safe mining technique gets me pretty far before turning back to check on the melons. The fact that I remember this odd off double chest of stuff is here is a miracle. So strangely tucked away. Resurfacing at night makes me impatient, but please let me cook. Turns out that that was the night of day four, considering by the morning of day five, I'm looking to make a safer tunnel from the main shaft, but on the Y level of water. This should make exploration, in general, more safe, as I can keep a boat at the shore like some sort of makeshift dock. It doesn't have to be beautiful, it just has to be functional. With infinite water handy, I can more easily double the output of this simpler melon farm. Day 6 sunrise starts slicing bamboos barbarically, followed by more deforestation. Much like a goth girl in high school, I do a lot of cutting in this playthrough. I thought I was fairly safe, until... This creeper creeped up on me, but thanks to the shield, I made it out perfectly fine. Can't say the same for the hole it left, but I can jump into the hole and leave a few torches. Harvesting cocoa. I need more. All the grass I have and bone meal later, and this wheat will come in handy for food. Mining continues at night, where I encounter some lava, though so far no diamonds. I have no immediate plans for any redstone farms, but I definitely need to incorporate some. Redstone builds make every world better, as passive resource gain is the best. With an iron pickaxe, it breaks through the deep slate better. Turns out it's day 7, but I'm not letting that stop me. Once I get down to flush bedrock, I begin the general resource strip mine in search of diamonds and iron as well as that beautiful, beautiful occasional gold. Most important of all, I found said diamonds. Only two, but that's rectified later, don't worry. Day eight, and I'm losing my mind. I honestly feel like the water is my only hope of finding some sort of useful loot. 
and every other which way around me is a jungle, which could very well lead me to a jungle temple, though I doubt the loot there would be really any all that good. Well, well, well. There was a village literally right here the whole time. I can still make the boat anyway. Wow, it wasn't even the right seed, and yet it turned out yet so very fortuitive anyway. Glory to God. A small platform serves to keep me from falling in, and in, in recording, I realize Oops. at this point that my microphone was off. Uh, frankly, it should probably just be off. Damn it, just get in the fuck hole! This is so irritating, get in the fuck hole! It starts to rain blood and theft as I loot the village for all that it's worth. By arbitrary, the largest closest building is selected as the central focal point, so I begin to fill it with the surrounding beds as well as the bell. Now I just gotta get these guys inside. I clear out the houses upstairs as well as basically seal off the villagers already stuck in the crevasse. They're on their own. Oh man, I almost uh, feel bad for leaving here to, to basically die. The moral of the video is safety. So this farm has got to have more support blocks and fences. I'm also going to extend it into an 8 block long formation after determining only 4 was too short. Double checking on the rest of the houses up top, I find no other signs of loot. My plans for a quick down are foiled by waterlogged blocks like leaves. The villagers are trapped by the evening so that by day 9 I can begin on crude construction capitalizing on villager trading. I'm particularly cheap, so when it comes to breaking the game, I'm all for it. In this case, I can basically cheat out good gear and resources with minimal risk, but all of the headache. These underslabbed cobblestone will serve a good temporary roof. Back at the starter hole, putting my hands all over some melons. I need a few items from the mine, and yes, this water is still my main way up and down from the starter hole. The first chest of future regret goes down for storage organization inside the villager area. Also, this set of things is brought inside. Remember, if you're cold, they're cold. I've already lost track of time because it's actually the night of day 12 when I'm done with the surrounding structure breaking down the original exterior. I knew I should have taken notes. The glory of water buckets in conjunction with corralling villagers simply cannot be understated. Even moving a guy over proves no real challenge. The main issue, spoiler, is getting a specific villager to lock onto the specific block and then not having another villager later lock onto that same block. On what I guess is day 13, I run back to my hole for the bamboo so I can replant it nearby in a more plentiful formation. Reforestation continues in an effort to combat the devastating loss of trees at the gross hands of me. This sugarcane here needs to be replanted. Did you know? You can cross-pollinate your crops in rows like this, making them grow faster. All these trees mean sticks, means profits, means I'll be eating good very soon, thanks to the golden carrots trade. By the beginning of the fourth recording session, I'm pretty sure it's still day 12, but for all I know, it's already day 100. Time is a meaningless construct when you really only ever have now when you think about it. Hello nope, there. it's day 17, and I'm just doing some gardening. The villager trading is going on, as it often does. It's just a bunch of rolling and re-rolling and trading, broken up by the occasional water bucket. Day 18, and I appear to be done with the original structure. I probably add an extra stall or two, but it's time to move back to cutting. Thanks to it raining, it helps dilute the blood. So much of this is just the same villager trading. I'll have to buy a bunch of armor I'll probably never wear, but it'll be worth it later. I decided I didn't have enough trees in my local vicinity, so I went out into the nearby forest to cut down more. Around day 22, I start really upping my stick guys to turn a bigger profit more quickly. Speaking of, day 23 is just more cutting and more trading. Until I get my first piece of diamond armor, boots. A few chainmail helmets later, and I'm looking to access to full diamond armor. It even has basic enchants. Day 24, cutting. Day 25, already a quarter of the way through, and I decided I needed to have some sort of decor set up so I adorned an armor stand with my previous non-diamond armor. But then I went right back to lumberjacking off. While I was out, some monsters got to sneak up on me, though the water helped me to overcome the situation with the greatest of ease. This allowed me to return to my mundane life of villager trading in the stonks market. This librarian is being a pain, but reminds me that I need to be able to see the outside more clearly. I might be terrible at keeping track of time in form of what actual day it is, but I definitely need to be able to see, at a glance and from inside, 
whether it's daylight or not. I'm also trying to fill in the underside of this trading area with torches so mobs won't spawn. Day 28, and I'm still cutting myself. I mean trees. I'm on the evening of what I'm certain is day 29, attempting to set up a makeshift iron farm. It doesn't work, so by day 30, in the rain, I get a zombie trapped inside. Unfortunately, trap doors don't stop light, which works well in farms, not so much in keeping the zombies alive in the sun. Oops. So I went looking for another. Found a golem, took the iron. While tending the sugar cane at night, I get distracted by a shooty boy. This seemed like a normal fare, but it turned out to be merely a distraction for this zombie. I had to take a break to get arrows, since I only need the one zombie, but I lost it. I found him, but unfortunately also found two baby zombies. I tried to just focus on him alone until a zombie knocked me off my roof. Before I knew it, there was an entire herd of zombies, including even two spiders. My health got a little low, though I ultimately survived with a captured zombie intact. I get him in there, but something somewhere just isn't a green, because I don't recall successfully spawning in iron golems in any capacity. This little zombie baby found its way next to my window. The next morning leaves stragglers, as well as the shocking revelation that this is already day 35. Okay, okay. So, how do you feel? To be honest with you, Diane, I'm surprised. I'm also shocked it's not working, so I distract myself with the destruction of property up on the mountain. The zombie is gone now, and frankly, good riddance. So much trading and cutting, but it's about day 38 when I get mending for only 14 emeralds. By day 42, I'm doing a little spelunking. I can't get too carried away with the trading, even though we're almost halfway there already. But just ignore that. Please. Once I'm back at the service, this wonderful trader hooks me up with one of the best trees in the game, spruce. The majority of this 8th recording, I feel, can be summed up by just saying I do a bunch more cutting and trading before going down into the caves. This is around day 52, and I'm getting quite a bit of coal and cobble. On the morning of day 53, I was greeted by a couple of zombies, but then two more, on fire, surprise dropped in on me from above. I just noped my way to safety, albeit at the cost of probably breaking my legs. Oh well, it's Minecraft. The villager corralling is a sad tax on productivity and creativity, but it's a necessary evil for the sake of getting good stuff to work with. Day 54 and I get my first anvil, though I'd yet to get Fortune 3, so it was a little pointless. And I make my way to a ruined nether portal. Maybe I should attempt to go through it. In it, I find my first golden apple as well as a bunch of flint. I then proceed to put protection 4 on my armor. Day 55, and I'm at basically the last librarian villager trying to get fortune 3 so I can get on with my life. It's about this time, however, that my issue with the villagers and the linking to the blocks or not comes into play. Luckily, time passes and so does my trouble with the villagers. I return to mining in the caves, trying out the newly obtained Fortune 3 ore hack. It's day 59, when it really starts setting in for me how much better it looks having a forest of mega spruce trees versus a bunch of mega jungle trees. I think it's the lack of messy vines everywhere, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm also doing more cutting, all day in fact. By day 60 I'm putting, of all things, Fortune 3 on a shovel so I can get flint from gravel for trading. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have bothered pillaring like this, as it's very dangerous. I mean, nothing happened, but still. Either way, I can get my weapons guy up now, despite not having access to abundant iron. It's day 61, and I'm only just now in something more akin to what I would call being normally yet modestly stocked. This means it's finally time to venture into the nether. Using the wood and lava trick doesn't work so much, so a flint and steel will have to do the trick. And it does. I hop into the portal, and it turns out my nether spawn point is a crimson forest. I take a quick peek around before hopping back in to safety. To give a chance of success for my nether expedition, I have to spend time caving and mining back deep inside my hole, trading in my villager trading for gold digging. I guess this is a mountain area or something, because I'm finding good, fair amounts of gold in the deep slate. I find my way into this underground ravine, but I can worry about it later. I'm just here for the gold. 
I mean, I'll take diamonds too. This one small vein turned out to be 14 in total. Back on the surface, it turns out to be the night of day 62 as well as also raining. Day 63 and I'm back in the nether with a fresh gold helmet and a small amount of gold ingots for trading. Also, I guess they didn't like me opening my own double chest, so I decided to give them some space before committing to the initial retaliationary tactics. Once the coast was clear, I was free to do more cutting, but this time in the nether. Try as I might, I could not, for the life of me, get this guy to trade me any fire resistant potions. Looking around found me skeletons, lava, and pigs, but no nether fortress in sight, nor any fire resistance potions. By the start of the next recording session, I have no idea what in-game day it is, but I need to make way for storage. Once that's clear, it's back into the nether to do a little digging around, always in search of either a fortress or ancient debris in general. I start to bridge off towards this distant area before realizing I can just staircase mine where I'm at already. Turns this? out it's day crazy. Nintendo 64. That got me nowhere, just like that hoglin. This other one though, I literally watched it murder a piglin. Savage. I ventured around in vain, only to turn tail and come back. On the morning of day 66, I am greeted by a creeper. Luckily, the water made it trivial. A couple cobblestone pillars mark the vague dock and I go back to the village. This house here is going to be turned into a storage shed type situation. This is going to be one of those classic 3x3 chests set up with frames on the ends. Oops, this means I need to kill some cows. Also, I can turn my See chunks down from 16 back to 8. Oh, this is by day 76. Day 67. Oh yeah, just like that. The next few days are spent getting organized. Also, part of getting organized is giving up an awful lot of trade waste. I'll leave this stuff here to despawn. I'm also tearing down all the rest of the villagers' houses and putting away their contents in storage. Even more cutting! Someone should call the suicide hotline. I mean, no, really, if you need to, do that. Or hop into the Discord. I'm not your real dad. Why didn't I just start every recording on the F3 screen? Or, or take notes? Anyway, whatever night this is, I'm just casually cutting trees and tearing down more village houses that aren't otherwise being used for anything. My first diamond hoe for the carrots is officially made and put to use, giving me over five stacks of carrots from even just this little farm. It took me this long to get Fortune 3 on a hoe, and yet I don't even know the exact day it is. Oh, whoa! This guy gives Looting 3 now. I guess I'll have to retire the original Looting 3 guy. Oops. Oh, okay, it's day 72, and I only had protection for on half my armor set. But now I know the day, and it's fully protected. Day 73, and I wanted some cows, I decided, so I pulled this small family of four into a little secluded captivity. Possibly not just for death. Day 74, I started making a little more room for them. I also had more being AFK than I realized or would like. At least I'm inside where something bad is less likely to happen, but still. This is probably during the Bible study. I do those weekly now, by the way. Great time. Day 75, the garden is finally getting extended to 8 blocks long on both sides. Day 76, the bottom layer of stone is getting replaced with dirt. Day 77, I'm doing more trades, but also setting up the enchanting table. I'm still not entirely sure if I've ever done an enchanting with it yet, but it's good. It's at some night that I decide it's time to unify the villager trading area and the rest of my base in one main design. Just come on in, buddy! That's what I did it for! <laughs> Day 78, and the copper is cooked up nice and ready to be used as slabs that while at first are gross and orange, will eventually turn into the blessed oxidized green in time. The floor gets torn away to be given an underlayer of dirt, followed by a deep slate outline and a bamboo wood of flooring. I'll also fill the wood out with blocks of bamboo and copper slabs as well. Again, they'll oxidize later. Day 80 and the roof is getting fixed up. It will consist of a layer of copper with glass in the middle. I also have to precariously replace each starter construction block with a random deep slate block. It starts raining during, which is just more motivation to complete the build, so my floor doesn't get wet. I don't need any mold. I get the last villager into this hole by the night of day 81, and adjust the entrance to an easy over fence with carpet. I'm out of deep slate, so I'm back in the mines in my hole. I uncovered diamonds as soon as I started, so you know it's a blessed playthrough. 
41 diamonds later, and I'm back to building with all that deep slate. I don't know what day it is when I decided to give the villagers a tiny single window, but it looks hilariously <laughs> cruel. <laughs> it's also a good time to harvest the crops. I really should have taken notes or hit F3 a lot more frequently. Either way, my sword can now heal itself thanks to mending. Of course, I set up decorations on the inside. Oh hey, it's day 87 when I turned on the shaders. Day 88 and I run by this cherry blossom that I got from a wandering trader. Those fellas can really come in handy sometime. I also start cleaning up the excess pathway blocks with my hoe. I really should have gotten an extra one, but oh well. The night is spent chopping down more trees. Man, everything but wings. Rough. I mean, basically everything. At night, I make my first firework and cry about it. Day 90 and I'm trying to replace all the random blocks with either dirt or bamboo wood, depending. Basically, just doing aesthetic works, filling in holes, etc. This, of course, extends to the farm. Oh, this guy's got slime balls? Man, the wandering traders are just coming in all sorts of clutch this map. I think it's the night of day 90 when I'm finally destroying the structure around my storage. With the floor dug out, I filled it in with deep slate, bamboo, and copper and surrounded it with more deep slate and also glass. I buy a neutral pick just for breaking blocks, but also make a silk touch pickaxe as well. Mind you, there's an awful lot of chopping trees and trading with villagers that gets sprinkled into all of this every day and I just keep glossing over, for the sake of brevity. Day 91 starts with gardening so I can up my cow numbers and is mostly spent running around, tending to my trees, and spreading more bamboo. I'm trying to help the aesthetic of the background as well as for my builds. For some reason, I'm finishing at night and also running around fighting mobs for fun. I'm basically just trying to get as much renovation and chores done as possible before day 100. The copper in my floor is finally starting to age and it really just screams to me that I should have done this earlier. It's already day 97 by the time this recording session ends and the final recording session begins. So after feeding my cows, I go down deep inside my hole to see how much stuff I can get after mining with all the new equipment. Starting to run low on torches on day 98, I tried planting this tree here. I hoped it would grow, but I guess trees don't grow on hopes, dreams, thoughts, and prayers. By the time I was done, I had obtained 8 stacks of copper and 42 diamonds. Not to mention all the deep slate by proxy, which I can always use later to build with. One of the last things I wanted to do was a little vanity project, if you will. I made a platform out of deep slate and bamboo wood, shocker, and then used that to display the loot I'd managed to gather in this 100 days. Diamond, copper, iron, even an emerald. I use bamboo blocks as a backdrop. Much like my main survival map, I know I'll want lightning rods all over the base as this will help deter lightning from my trees in the event that a thunderstorm gets to go unchecked. The walkway for the garden gets an extension this night and the cows get fed and bred. And just like that, the sun rose on my hundredth day. Well, I did it. I didn't really achieve anything <laughs> but but I didn't die I spent a little time that day walking around reviewing things and taking it all in and that's that besides the following session where I got the still shots with shaders this was the last play session in the map the still shot shaders were gotten in a backup of the world so that I could get all the shots I needed but without needlessly pushing the days count forward in the actual hardcore map itself. While getting the shots for the deep slate mines, I found out that the tree ended up growing after all. Neat. And that's it. That's my first ever 100 days video in the bag. And did I play it too safe or am I doing okay? Either way it goes. Thank you so very much for watching. And as platonically as possible. I love you.